Coming up in today's video, we're talking about some massive plans for WrestleMania 39. And no, I'm not joking when I tell you it is massive. And yes, we got to talk about some character changes and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's happening right here on The Ango Show. All right, y'all, we're going to kick things off with Montez Ford because immediately after Raw, Montez Ford was, uh, was teasing a little bit of a character change. And this is where I get super intrigued by everything that's going down here because I think super highly of the Street Profits. If you watch this channel, you know I am a massive fan of what they've done as a tag team. In fact, I want to see more than just them being a babyface group. And it looks like Montez Ford might be thinking the same thing because after Raw went off the air, they did, you know, the digital exclusive stuff, the digital content, and Montez Ford was... Man, he was killing it. He was on fire. So he was talking to Kathy Kelly, and he was saying that, uh, you know, everybody thinks the, the Street Profits aren't too serious. They, you know, he mentions how they make jokes and everything like that. Uh, but then he calls out Austin Theory. He says, Theory, I'm telling you this right now. Come find me. Matter of fact, if you don't find me, I'll come find you. Now, keep in mind, they were both in the Elimination Chamber match uh, this past year. Montez Ford, a lot of people said he was the MVP that night. Definitely no surprise there. He absolutely killed it. That whole Elimination Chamber pay-per-view was one that was just, it was on fire. Montez Ford got the big, big, big spotlight in that match. And the best part is there's been a lot of talk about WWE potentially turning them into bad guys, potentially splitting them up. If WWE splits them up, I think Dawkins and Montez Ford could split up. I don't want to see them feud with each other. I don't think that benefits either guy. If they're going to split up and go their own separate way, have them come back at some point. You could do that by them just amicably splitting up. Um, but if WWE wants to turn them heel as a tag team, I actually think that's a better choice here for now. Eventually, you could split them up if you want to. But for now, we got to keep this tag team running, this tag team division going. You know, this tag team division's on fire. A lot of big things are expected, especially after WrestleMania. I would have Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins turn heel. And then inevitably, if you want them to split up, that's maybe when I would turn Montez Ford into a good guy. So many great things can happen here. But uh, just, wow. Yeah, Montez Ford showing a little bit of new attitude, maybe a new character in the works. Can't wait to see what happens there. Guys, we got to talk about LA Knight. This is exciting for me. Um, so as you guys know, I was very, very, very critical of WWE putting Bray Wyatt and LA Knight together. And it just so happens that I was pretty much damn right about my opinion on that. In the sense that WWE needs to have plans for LA Knight in order for this to be a successful feud. Because we saw the way it went down in the Pitch Black match. Now Wrestling News Co. on their premium service has actually talked about LA Knight... Because there's been a lot of talk about LA Knight reportedly backstage. Wrestling News Co. was told that people in positions of power in WWE are very happy with LA Knight's work. And they are very happy with the crowd reactions he has been getting at live events. Knight was one of the names brought back several months ago by Triple H. And belief among those was uh, that Levesque wanted to do more with LA Knight. Now there is actually a flaw here with Wrestling News Co. LA Knight was never released... Uh, when he was, when Triple H was brought in, just keep that in mind. LA Knight was playing Max Dupree. Okay, so keep that in mind. It wasn't Max Dupree. Uh, was it Max Dupree? Whatever it was, yeah, uh, whatever. Brain fart. But you know what I'm talking about. He was the Maximum Male Models ma manager. Um, so nonetheless, we know that that was Vince McMahon's idea for LA Knight. LA Knight was that. Then Triple H came back. He brought in LA Knight instead of Max Dupree. So nonetheless, uh, just a little correction there. And then also, uh, Wrestling News Co. goes on to say, We haven't heard if this means that he will be in line for a title program with whoever is a champion, but it's worth noting that Knight will be on Raw competing against Cody Rhodes, which we saw that last night. This is a sign that perhaps WWE is looking at doing uh, LA Knight versus Cody Rhodes again later down the line. I agree with that. Um, another thing that they were told about with LA Knight, and this one, guys, seems to actually really, really impress me. This really makes me happy. Another thing we were told about LA Knight is that people in the company were very happy with how he handled the creative presented to him for his feud with Bray Wyatt. Some felt that the storyline would have hurt him, but he ran with everything that was presented to him, and that has not gone unnoticed. 
I say this all the time if you're a wrestler. You might not like your creative. You might not like anything. But at the end of the day, it is a job, right? So if you worked at Target or Walmart and you didn't like your job, then you just quit your job, okay? In the WWE, if you do your job very well, you're going to get rewarded for it. And if you don't do a very good job, you're probably not going to get rewarded for it, right? Now, the difference is they have contracts and stuff like that, but we've seen talent time and time again walk out. My point that I'm trying to make is sometimes it's okay dealing with the shit that they throw at you because sometimes they know that it's shit and they're putting you through it, but they still have plans for you. And this could exact this could be exactly what we're looking at with LA Knight. And guys, the best part of it, the best part about this is that LA Knight is somebody who is so good on the microphone and he's good in the ring. He can sell big matches. So I don't think anything is impossible with LA Knight. And that leads us to our final story of today's video. We're talking about Stone Cold Steve Austin because it appears that WWE has pitched a massive match for LA Knight. And that includes Stone Cold Steve Austin. So there were more details, obviously, with Fightful Select. Uh, but basically, Fightful Select had reported that LA Knight's name was one that's been pitched to be Stone Cold Steve Austin's opponent. The rumor that was making the rounds on social media was that... Uh it was that this is what was planned, but obviously it was not confirmed. There is no confirmation that Austin vs. LA Knight is happening, but it's interesting that Austin is in fantastic shape, and he's left the door open for another return. Um, guys, we know the storyline right now is LA Knight is desperate to get on WrestleMania. He wants to be on WrestleMania. There is no WrestleMania moment without LA Knight. They're in Los Angeles. You have LA Knight there. It makes a lot of sense for LA Knight versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. But for the love of God, WWE, if you really, 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 really want people to take LA Knight serious, you got to have him defeat Stone Cold Steve Austin. And you know, the thing is, I really like Stone Cold. And if you watch his podcast and if you watch his shows and everything that comes with it, I think he also knows at the very same time that he has to, you know, he has to put talent over. And if he likes a talent, he'll do it. That's the thing about these legends coming back. It could be beneficial. LA Knight going over Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania would be massive. It's actually the match that makes the most sense to me. And you know what? It doesn't even need that big of a build because we're seeing LA Knight already lay the groundwork for wanting to be at WrestleMania. You can do a thing where, kind of like Seth Rollins did with NXT TakeOver years and years ago, Seth Rollins hijacked NXT. I would have LA Knight hijack WrestleMania. In this case, if you're going to go this route of without building a story, if LA Knight were to hijack WrestleMania and then, you know, not leave the ring until somebody comes out, you can have him lose to Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's completely fine. He gets the massive moment. He gets the big pop with Stone Cold. And also on top of that, if WWE reportedly does have plans of pushing LA Knight after WrestleMania, this right here is the big start of it. I cannot wait to see what WWE does, guys. I want to know what you guys think in the comment section down below, and I'll see you next time.